uh, today is Thursday, May 15, 2014. May I please have the attendance, Dr. Entwick? Mrs. Bealey. Here. Mr. Chiazzo. Here. Mrs. Lang. Here. Mrs. Massengill. Here. Mrs. Murphy. Here. Ms. Perry. Here. Mrs. Shea. Here. Ms. Murray. Here. Ms. Agar. Here. Would you please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Do we have any adjustments to the agenda this evening? I believe all adjustments have been made in the final revised agenda that you all received. Okay, so noted. Uh, then we will move right into our business agenda. We have a 5.1, an appointment. I will turn that over to you, Dr. Entwistle. Yes, this is um, uh, we're getting started, um, as you can see, in, in terms of filling positions that were created by this one by resignation. Um, this is a recommendation for the appointment of um, Ms. Winchester, um, as, who is a speech and language pathologist, speech and language cl uh, clinician. Uh, she has been both in Biddeford, where, where she is now, and also in the Kittery School Department. Um, and uh, the recommendation is to appoint mm -hmm. uh, Jessica Winchester as a speech and language therapist for the Scarborough Schools. Okay. Move appointment. Second. Any questions, comments? No? All in favor of approval as presented? Seven. Thank you. All right, we have our workshop agenda then that we'll move on to. And we have a presentation this evening from the Scarborough Education Foundation. I'd like to welcome Jeff Ertman and Larissa Pratt from the Scarborough Education Foundation. Absolutely, please step up to the microphone so we'll all be able to hear you. Welcome, Mr. Thank Ertman. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having us here this evening, uh, the Board of Education. I'm going to give a very brief overview of uh, a review for, I believe, just about everyone in the room, but for the benefit of those who may not be previously initiated to uh, the work of the Scarborough Education Foundation. Uh, just a very quick um, overview, as I said, of who we are and what it is that we attempt to accomplish within the Scarborough Education System. The Education Foundation is an independent, nonprofit organization of community volunteers whose mission is to enhance academic excellence in the Scarborough schools by funding innovative and creative educational programs and initiatives that fall outside the traditional school budget considerations. What we try to do in a nutshell is to uh, fundraise to be able to provide funding to educators who have these wow ideas uh, that do fall outside traditional school budget uh, considerations. And what we hope to do here this evening is to enlighten the board and the community about the most recent grant cycle and the payout that we have, uh, of the grants that we have uh, most recently awarded. Um, very briefly, what we try to do with the grants that we do fund, uh, that we vote to fund, is that we look at that as seed money, whereas uh, where the, uh, the money that's being paid out is for a, an idea that does fall outside the traditional school budget for that teacher who's got that, that great idea that uh, for one reason or another there just doesn't happen to be money in the school budget uh, to be able to consider doing something like that. We consider it seed money because we want the teacher to really think this process through and, and, and execute the program that uh, that's been funded and approved by the Education Foundation whereby they be, might be able to uh, approach their building administrators or administration or the school board uh, to the point where something like that might be considered for future consideration for uh, funding within the budget. So uh, basically, as I said, what Larissa Pratt is going to present, Larissa is here as our uh, chair of our grants committee and she's going to give a little bit more detail about the specific grants that were awarded through our spring grant cycle. And I'd like to introduce Larissa. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, and thank you very much for having us. Um, 
you know, uh, you should have received three documents from us in advance, and I thank Kelly for helping me with that. Um, one of them is a, a piece of sort of marketing material that we've put together that's more of an overview of where we've come since 2011, and it's the one that has our big SEF logo on the front, and it just summarizes grants awarded and thanks our donors, because really one of the things, we're in our fifth grant cycle. We just completed our fifth grant cycle. We've been in existence for a good, strong um, two and a half years now, so we have some experience with this grant process, uh, but we're realizing that the marketing piece, the uh, you know, the need to get our message or really the message of the teachers and the projects that the teachers are engaged in out to the parents and out to the community because really for us it's one big cycle. We raise the money, then teachers come in with our ideas, then we fund the ideas, they go back to the classroom and implement these projects that they have, but then we want to tell our donors this is what's been going on so that you can feel good about the donations that you're making and know where your money is going. So this is just a piece, um, a marketing piece that we put together that summarizes that we have been able to award $62,000 in, um, in programming that goes directly to students since um, our inception in uh, 2011, and then you'll see, you know, itemized are just a sampling of some of the grants that we've awarded over the years. <laughs> this is updated, so it does include some of the grants that I'll touch on this evening as well, but what we want to do, of course, is to let everyone know that our grants have touched every um, educational level and every school that's in the district. That's an important part of our mission is to make sure that we're balancing out, um, you know, the distribution of, of funds to every grade level. Another a document that I'm not going to spend time on here this evening, but I just wanted you to have, is a narrative uh, report that I've put together now, again, as, as a marketing piece to go out to uh, the media. It's basically a press release that just articulates in a little more detail the uh, grants that we awarded here in the spring cycle. And um, it summarizes to say that we distributed over $18,000 in the spring cycle, and it articulates a few group, um, you know, sort of subject areas or I guess themes would be a better way to put it and that's something that we really noticed as we went through the grants that were presented to us this time around. Uh, primarily what we're noticing is requests for projects that are um, well, what I call project-based learning, also inquiry-based learning, and a lot of interdisciplinary learning. So that was a strong theme in a lot of these grants. And um, so that sh that's the third document that, that you have. It's a grid. And, and it kind of helped me when I was thinking about them. I, I felt a nice balance in terms of what we were able to award. And what the teachers, it's them coming up with these very interesting projects. And the first one you'll see is called the Local Stories Project and it is something that's going to be happening at the Wentworth School. And um, there's three third grade teachers that are collaborating on this effort. And what they're doing is to bring in um, an artist in residence who's going to help them produce this uh, mural. And I'm happy to share um, links, you know, for websites for who this, these artists are that work with the kids. But the basis for the learning is the social studies or history uh, project where the kids are going to learn about the history of Scarborough, and that's a traditional piece of study that happens in the third grade. But what is added here is we're going; the kids, I guess, are going to be talking both to um, community members who have some perspective on the history of Scarborough, as well as the Scarborough Historical Society and other area historical societies. And they're going to take this information and they're going to create scenes, artistic scenes, and that's what the artist is going to help them with, and then it can have um, an installment at the new Wentworth School. So we were very proud to be a part of that project because it's something that will be a permanent part of the new building. I think it is a very nice reflection of... Um, well, certainly our town, but learning that can go on from year to year. Uh, but 
but again, this whole idea of interdisciplinary learning, I guess that I was talking about before, that while the subject matter is social studies and history, we're incorporating an art component. There's also, um, I believe, going to be a performance. Um, so there's a, a, a creative uh, theater type of element where, I, you know, like a play that you might have had in, in earlier years acting out, you know, different scenes of, of life in Scarborough. Um, so it was a very exciting project, and um, I like the fact, well, we all like the fact that it also had these different elements to it. Eight Corners is going to play host to an Earth Loom, which I wish I had a graphic for it because it's a very cool thing to see. It's about a seven or eight foot um, structure that will be brought onto the grounds over at Eight Corners, and the art teacher will be leading this effort primarily, but basically are going to have the entire school community work on creating a weaving that will live outside and will serve both as a sculpture as well as an animal attractor, a wildlife attractor. And the idea there, again, being interdisciplinary is not just to learn about the nature of weavings and different, um, you know, how different cultures use weavings, the physical process of learning how to weave. Um, there's, you know, uh, mathematics involved as well in figuring out what it is, how much do you need, these strings run this way, these strings are going to run the other way. Um, but the idea also is is to understand and, and kind of watch what happens to the loom as the winter months go by and the spring goes by and, you know, are animals taking from it and what are they doing um, with some of the materials that are in there. And the materials are supposed to also be recycled materials from the school gardens. So, um, I just thought that was another nice creative project that um, is, it's, it's just different, but again, is integrating science, social studies, math, and art in a, in a school community collaboration. We are sensitive to, um, you know, having one school have, you know, more grants than others. We don't have a lot of control over that. As I say a lot, we are a reactive organization. We don't proactively go out and say, gee, you know, Pleasant Hill, we want you to do this grant. We, we let people know what our mission is, and then we um, respond to what the requests are. But it's always very nice when you have a balance of different schools asking for um, projects that we can award. Uh, we have a, a project called STEM Exploration, and that is for the kindergarten through second graders. And it is going to be, it's a nice collaboration because it's going to be for all three primary schools, and it's spearheaded by um, the middle school technology integrator. So she is uh, proposing to purchase um, what she calls simple machine Lego kits and these invention kits so that the kids will have these um, you know, materials available to them to help develop physical science components, technology, engineering, and math skills. So again, it'll be little sets of, of manipulatives that they can use to do different projects. So that was another nice, um, nice multi or interdisciplinary project. A different category that we were seeing too it was um, some interest in in augmenting the traditional classroom setting. So there's a couple. The next two uh, grants that are listed, stability balls or alternative seating, and sound field system are two of of those such grants. So the stability balls is is um, going to happen at the Blue Point School in the um, academic support classroom. So we have granted, um, well, we have awarded grants before for stability balls in other um, schools. So at the intermediate school and also at um, the middle school. But this one is at the primary school level and it's in a special um, services classroom. I guess that's probably not the right word, but an academic support classroom. So again, we want to just take a look and see, is, is that helpful? Is it, is it meaningful for the children's learning to have um, their sensory needs met in a way that can minimize the classroom disruption of, I'm uncomfortable, I have to go to the bathroom, I need a drink, when really what the child needs is to just be able to move around a little and, and meet sensory needs. But 
it's got to be beneficial if we don't have more disruption to the other students um, as well. So we'll see how that goes. And something very, very new, I guess, is the sound field system. And this is going to happen in the middle school. And a sound field system, I have learned, is an audio amplification system. And um, there are some students who have individual amplification systems, but this project is not, this is intended to benefit the entire classroom. It's like me speaking into a microphone. So the notion is, if you've ever gone to a surround sound theater, <laughs> that you, you know, if you're in the back and you, and I'm speaking to you from the front as an instructor, you may not be hearing me. Um, so your interest in whatever I'm saying maybe is waning, and then your understanding of what I'm saying is waning. So the premise here is that if we can have um, amplification of the speaker's voice and also of any audiovisual equipment that's being used in the classroom, if it can be amplified throughout the classroom, then um, perhaps there's you know more learning, more understanding, more engagement with the students. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, and then the last theme again returns us to the inquiry-based learning or project-based approach. And both of these initiatives, one is called expeditionary learning, and the other is I Global Leadership Change Maker Project. They're both proposed for middle school, and. This is um, expeditionary learning. I, I'm becoming an expert on this as well. It's, it's very interesting our, what we do because we get to learn about all these different things that are happening that I probably wouldn't have exposure to otherwise. And I guess this is the benefit of the children having exposure to this sort of thing too. So we have two teachers, a third grade, te uh, excuse me, at the middle school, a sixth grade teacher and a seventh grade teacher who are going to get some training in this uh, concept of expeditionary learning and bring it back to their classrooms so that it, from what I understand, it is a very specialized way of instruction that happens on a day-to-day -day basis, but that it is an intensive kind of learning that puts a lot of personal responsibility on the student for their own learning. And it, the mechanism used is called, they're called expedition. So I guess you could think of it as a field trip, but I think it's, it's, it's a very developed field trip with a specific purpose, and that purpose runs through the instruction for a term or whatever the subject matter is that they would want. So, for example, if a local project, say we identified, you know, um, pollution in the marsh as being an issue that needs a solution or continued solutions, then the class may take that on as an expedition and go to see the marsh and then consult with experts in pollution and consult with persons who come up with solutions for this kind of thing and try to figure out what is a good way for us to approach this. Another example was um, organic foods. So somebody, you know, we may be able to have these groups collaborate with um, Broad Term Farm, for example, to go talk about how organic food has an impact on your health, your learning, your well-being. So again, it's an effort to lay out a full curriculum, but to use these intensive processes, experts in the field to help understand the lesson better and to internalize it. Likewise, um, the ELA Gate students at the middle school will have the opportunity to do a similar thing, but on a more global scale, so that, again, these students, the iGlobal entity puts together projects that are specific for our group of students. And then those students will be expected to educate themselves about this issue, whatever it may be, how it's handled globally, try to come up with sustainable solutions to this identifiable problem. And so we're building those, um, you know, cr critical thinking, creativity, problem solving skills. And um, their project does involve an oral presentation and defense of their project to a larger group, I believe, in Portland. So I think we've got some very exciting things going on, some new things. Um, certainly, that's our job, is to try to bring new things. And um, I'd be happy to answer questions or whatever you want to ask of me. Joe, uh, I don't have a question. I just have a comment that it's great to have you guys here and um, to hear the grants that 
were awarded this cycle. It's one of the things that I miss about being a part of SEF and, and hearing all the, the neat ideas and innovative ideas that the teachers come up with. So these are very exciting, and I'm glad you guys are here to, to tell us. Yeah, we appreciate the opportunity. It's great. Um, I, I too want to say thank you, and it's um, it's amazing to see how a little bit of money, relative, we've been talking about millions of dollars at the budget cycle, how a very small relative amount of money can have such a huge impact in the classroom. I think it's important for us to realize that as well as we work with the bigger picture as well. A little bit can go a long way. Um, having said that, the the high school side of things, I, there, I, I know you would mention trying to, to get everybody involved. Do you see, you, do you not see a lot of activity from the high school side, or is it is it something that you're hoping to pick up a little bit on? Or? You know, we have had a lot of activity on the high school side. This is the first cycle where we haven't had an application from the high school. Um, I do need to reach out to the principal, I think, and try to identify why that is the case. But um, we did attend, uh, Jeff and myself and Jody, I don't, well, there were a number of us that were at the high school orientation, and I had put together one of these sheets. Here are all the grants that we've awarded. Uh, over the years that have benefited high school students specifically. So there's a, there's a lot of great stuff. One of them is is my lead off item on the summary sheet, the, the marketing sheet, digital data probes for high school biology, chemistry, anatomy, and physiology students to collect, analyze, and communicate research findings in new ways. And that was a substantial grant. It was a $6,000 grant that we awarded um, a year ago now, I believe, and I just got the evaluation form back from that, and the takeaway was the, the teachers explaining that students really had the opportunity to, to, to engage in research that was consistent with university and industry standards, not just a typical um, high school lab, and that was really nice, as you can gather, that it, it brought it touched on a lot of different special sciences, not just one classroom. You know, it was regular biology and AP biology, traditional chemistry and an AP chemistry class, so it, it did hit a lot of students. Um, we've also helped fund uh, a poetry slam project. I don't know if you girls were exposed to that at all, but it was a few years ago now, and that was an interesting project to new, a new way to try to um, see how poetry and can be exciting. You know, the whole theory is to have it be more uh, almost like the things that people enjoy about a sporting event, that there's a live performance and there's an immediate evaluation for how you performed and there's hooting and hollering and that sort of thing. So we were, that was an exciting one to be a part of. We also helped to uh, start up the school store that's at, at the high school, and that was a great project for us because we funded a thousand dollars and they raised a thousand dollars. So together, we, you know, they had enough money to purchase inventory in the lockers where they store things, and that was started through an entrepreneurial class. So I loved it. It was great. It's just it's like here you go, and there was a website component to it. So it really gave the kids that were in that class a chance to say, okay. I can see how maybe I might start my own business or how this would work or what are the elements that I need or maybe this is a lot harder than what I had in mind. So those are just a few, but I think we're very actively involved in the high school and um, I hope we'll be able to you know, re-engage with some applications come fall. I, I'd like to say something. I, the um, school store did come here, the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial class, sorry having a tongue twister, um, they came and did a presentation for us and they okay. brought some students and they described to us about the school store and how it was working and so it's nice to see that these things, many of them are just not a one-time thing so that these digital probes that are there at this high school now can be used in continuum in future classes so that it's nice to see that it's not just a one-time thing that they can be incorporated for future use as well. So I. I cannot say enough thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you um, from, from, I'm sure, all of us. And, so. and one of the things, you know, about that, we, we try our vision, you know, as Jeff was explaining, is the seed money piece. Um, as we see it, though, you know, we do try to encourage um, data 
measurement tech, you know, tools to be incorporated in the grant when it happens. And more and more I'm getting comfortable explaining to the teachers why that is because they say, you're excited now. We're going to get this going for you now with funding, but we can only do it once. So if it works, you want to be ready with information that shows why it works so that you can advocate for yourself for your project. Um, and anyway, that's our hope is that some of these projects will be incorporated going forward. It's hard. It takes a while, but we're a little bit of a shortcut, you know, for teachers to get it going and say, see, see, I, you know, I knew it could work or, you know, if we had a little bit more of this, then, then we could do that, you know. So I'm glad that they're able to come and, and continue with that. We've had Lego Robotics came, and, and that was a grant that you had funded. There have been several, there have been several others. I can't remember them all, but I think um, the 3D printer yes, uh, the, at yes, the middle yes. school was Mr. a big Davidson. one, Mr. Yes. Davidson, and, yes. and that's interesting too because we learn, and I think we're very encouraging to say it is okay if this doesn't work. Of course, we want it to work, but one of the things you're going to learn is, you know, I, I think back to the old dot matrix printer. You know, when I was reviewing his evaluation, it's a wonderful idea, it's a wonderful project. In practice, it's a little bit slow, you know, we could use the NASA model, you know, but we get started and we see how it goes and is it useful and then, you know, it's easier to say, now I really know what we need and and that it would be worthwhile, so, yeah. Kelly? Well, that was just my question. I wanted to um, point out the relevance of the seed money going forward and um, if you had some examples of grants that were funded that now have become part of the regular budget. I know we've only been five cycles in, so it may be too soon to see um, some of the projects in the, in the general budget, but I didn't know if there were any that have already made it. I, I was thinking of that myself, and, and I guess I was going to ask you folks if you had seen any projects of, uh, that started with us that had been requested as, you know, part of the budget. I'm, n I'm not sure that that's exactly how it works if perhaps it needs to begin at the building principal level um, and then maybe makes its way to the school board. But I, 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 the best I can say is that there are projects that can continue um, that perhaps don't need additional funding. So that's exciting. Um, we, we don't ever want innovation to be uh, synonymous with technology. But the fact of the matter is when we purchase technology, it can, you know, for the, for the teachers, it can be used over and over again. And, you know, one evaluation that came in did make that point. It's, it, I think it was the data probes. It's great that we'll be able to use those going forward. I got a review um, today about the use of iPads. It was an integrated, uh, well, I got a couple. We, 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 there's about a year that the teachers have to implement their program and then we really start knocking on their door and say, how'd it go or how is it going so that we can give this kind of feedback and know for ourselves what's working. Um, and teachers at the intermediate school had requested iPads so that they could use apps and use the pads themselves to streamline the amount of administrative time that they were using to track reader fluency. So, you know, you have this image of the child and is reading one-on-one -on -one with the teacher and then the teacher's got to jot down how far we got and all this, you know, detail, which is important to track progress, but probably our preference and the greatest benefit to the children is to keep working one-on-one -on -one with the teacher and not worry so much about the documentation. So, um, sometimes I use the analogy of, you know, we buy toasters because what teachers want is to serve toast, but they need the apparatus, they need the technology to produce the toast. So even though it's an iPad or, you, or a tablet and we get a fair number of requests for those, it's really the application um, and the use that the teachers are making of the technology that, that is the end product and that we're the most interested in. But at any rate, and the intermediate school, they did make the point that this was enormously helpful and that they were thrilled that they would be able to continue using this technique for recording, you know, the progress that students are making in, in reading fluency. Likewise, there was a project that is based out of uh, the Blue Point School, and it was an integrated project for the art health and PE, and they were also using iPads and experimenting with um, different apps that would be helpful in those subject matters. I think some of the takeaway was they had three iPads and they were 
going to use them with other tablets and things that they had, and it just sometimes isn't enough. There's just not enough hardware to allow every child to be working simultaneously. But that it was a great experience for them to be able to try these new things and see how they integrated with their existing curriculum and objectives. So, Jackie? I just, uh, I am so pleased that uh, Dr. Entwistle and you started this program for our students and our teachers. And when I hear you speak about the projects that have been submitted by our staff and that you've been able to fund, and I know that there are others that have not been successful in receiving funding, but it just points out to me, and I hope the public and the voters, that we have a staff here who is extremely creative, who are engaging with our students, who are trying to save the town money, and uh, we need to honor that. And I thank you for coming here this evening and honoring that for us and for the public who watch because you say $62,000, that's minuscule compared to the results that that $62,000 is producing in our town. And I think in these times of very difficult budgeting, that our teachers don't have the opportunity to come to the school board or the superintendent or their principal and say, look, I have this great idea that I think will enhance the learning of our children. And you've been able to provide that for us, and I thank you very much, and we'll continue financially to support as much as I can. Thank you. Yep, we appreciate your, your partnership, and I'm happy about the partnership as it has developed. It's been really, it's very important for us to make sure we're working in sync and, um, and sending a sort of united message, so. Jane, did you yeah, I just want to say thank you guys so much for what you do, and, uh, you know, it's, it was just an amazing idea to start this, you know, a couple of years ago, and um, I think, you know, your focus is great, you know, help us. Uh, the, for the academic excellence, I really uh, I want to come, come to you guys for what you, you know, good work. Thank mm. you. Donna? Just to, to pick back on all these wonderful words, um, it, it also is on the community to step forward and attend your fundraisers. And so a thank you is, is deserved there as well for people who do actually care about making these things possible and attend your events. And and since we're on the subject of events and fundraising for SES, I will certainly be happy to make a plug. Um, there's a new fundraiser that SES has undertaken this year, and it's called Operation Graduation Balloon Sendoff 2014. And my understanding is, is that there will be Mylar balloons delivered to anyone who's willing to donate $5. You can put your student's name, address, and then sign a note to that. Now, if you don't have a student and you're still looking to participate, um, there are some students that may not have anybody purchase a balloon on their behalf, and I believe that the foundation is willing to give you a student that you could do you, a balloon either for. Either that or what, what I, because we, for instance, I don't have a graduate. Yeah, I've, I've got you know, kids in high school or kids in the schools, one in middle school and one in high school, high school junior and an eighth grader at the middle school. What I'm thinking about doing personally myself is I've got a couple of graduates on my street and thinking of just buying balloons and, and having them delivered to people on my street. So what I would recommend to members of the board here is if, you, if that, you've got folks in your circles, in your neighborhood or uh, within your social or professional networks to consider doing something like that, but certainly, as you say, Christine, uh, to consider um, being assigned a student, um, there is always that possibility. is and something I'm not sure we've specifically um, discussed, and I'm not privy, um, as I should be, with regard to the fundraising committee and how they're planning to handle that, but certainly uh, there are multiple ways to do that. Um, certainly we would love to see every graduating senior be the recipient of balloons uh, through this initiative. It, it really helps us to celebrate our graduating <laughs> seniors and uh, to the end of what was discussed a little bit earlier is the community involvement. 
um, that you made mention of, Donna, is uh, community spirit uh, to ensure that we're coming together for positive reasons. Um, and it uh, clearly helps the, the foundation to be able to continue to be able to fund uh, grant applications as they come in, uh, these creative and innovative ideas. We, we certainly need the fundraising with regard to that. So uh, we do have, a, as, as uh, Christine made mention of, we have a, a deadline for orders of May 29th. Um, Five dollars for uh, each balloon. Um, certainly, I would suggest. I mean, we're not telling how many balloons people should buy, but I would be thinking a couple or three balloons. I would think would be a nice presentation on a mailbox for a graduating senior. So uh, the form is here, um, and I do have extra forms. I believe all of you were presented with this form, and that is also available on our website, uh, which is where I found this form and downloaded it and printed this off. Our website is www.sefmaine.org, and you can find that there. It was right on the front page of that for Operation Graduation Balloon Send-Off. We thank you very much for your time this evening, and hope that you will continue to support our efforts to make sure that we can uh, best position Scarborough students for their future. Thank you again uh, to Jeff you. Hartman and Larissa Pratt for coming out and doing that. And, and Larissa, I think um, at one point you asked a question, and, and I, I do definitely see um, how uh, some of these projects have been catalysts. They are not necessarily, um, this is not a linear process. Um, it sometimes go, goes in, in different ways, but for example, the STEM at middle school was, um, was really some experimentation that really helped shape a better direction for STEM there. Um, I think um, as well uh, at the high school, when you, when you brought up the, uh, and these are probably just uh, because you mentioned these projects, the entrepreneurial project that you got started um, really has a longer term vision as well. And I think that uh, SEF uh, got it started, um, but there's a long term view of pot potentially thinking about um, a, a certification that can be added to a graduate's diploma in um, entrepreneurship. And, but we needed to get things started first, and that's probably we're probably still a few years away from that. Maybe not a few, but at least a year or so away. Um, so there are things, again, that, that absolutely these have served as catalysts. In terms of the project-based learning, inquiry-based learning, um, uh, as you know, the middle school and the Wentworth school are moving into new configurations where they will actually have inquiry teams. And so that this work is, is absolutely critical as catalyst to really understand what is expedi uh, expeditionary learning, uh, what is inquiry-based learning, how do we do that well. So um, all of these things are, are critically important and, and uh, will play a role in shaping the future of where we're going. So it's a, it's a big impact you're having. And thank you. All right. Now... We have 6.2, we have our summer and fall planning. Yes, I, um, I have something here to share with you somewhere, a few different piles. We put together, um, oh here it is, we put together a draft, um, Kelly and I did today, uh, as we begin to look at next year's school board meetings, um, and most important, some of the things that are coming up uh, here in the spring and, uh, and the summer. So I'll send some of you down that way. Thank you. Do you have enough down there? Uh, oh, I might, we need need a, I need, might need a couple more here. Um, I believe Dr. Entwistle shorted this end of the table. I'm sorry. That's right. Oh, would, you oh, like <laughs> would you like one, Dr. Entwistle? Oh, did you get one? Oh, all right. So now we'll... <laughs> Wow. <laughs> uh, sensitive. Uh, so <laughs> there's a few things that I want to remind you about. And I said, you know, this is actually supposed to be a workshop setting, so we usually we're looking at each other and just chatting. Oh. Um, but uh, we did have the business <coughs> ahead of time, so I guess we got set up in this, in this mm. fashion. Um, uh, in terms of uh, summer planning, or let's start for s spring planning. And just a reminder that May 23rd is our PLT celebration day. Um, things get started at 9, where the um, exhibits open at 9, 
and I believe that I um, also extended an invitation for you all to uh, stay if you can, and there will be a lunch served, I think, at 11.30. We looked at um, uh, single uh, school board uh, meetings in July and August and landed basically on July 31st um, and August 14th. So those would be days that you would um, uh, hopefully be available. The board adjusts its summer schedule a little bit and is not meeting twice um, a month, but just once a month. So those are uh, days I know my August um, and July it is already getting committed. So, so you, I wanted to uh, give those dates to you. Um, and what time is the what time are we doing the retreat? Is that going to be early on in the day because I already have a conflict? I think um, the uh, August 14th is what uh, Christine is referring to, and uh, the idea would be to have a school board retreat, um, a little bit of a joint meeting uh, with the leadership council as we have done before, and, and then uh, a dinner or maybe a, a little meeting, a dinner meeting with them, and okay. So. Sorry. So we'll, um, <laughs> this is why these dates are being put out there. <laughs> it's a draft. August, it, August yeah, well, my, it's a draft. My, it's my daughter's going away slash graduation gathering. Oh, so come I'm on. Where would you rather? <laughs> I'm sorry, but she's oh, leaving, she's leaving for the summer. Her we'll leave her left. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, it seems like you're nitpicking. Okay. <laughs> what if we All buy right. her a balloon? We'll take that. We'll get her okay. a balloon. It'll be fine. Okay, so um, right. there we go. Um, so, so we might look at maybe that the week of August uh, 14th um, perhaps might work. I know that the school, the uh, leadership council is actually committed for at least three of those days. That's oh. why we selected um, okay. the 14th. But maybe we could uh, look again. Right. But so um, perhaps we can pull the board and see what might work. Um, and then I wanted to also let you know that August 26th is um, the opening day of school. It's the first staff day, and uh, you never know. Um, what kind of interesting surprise uh, might be there on August 26th? Will that be beginning at 9 or 8.30? Um, that's usually yeah, it's roughly, roughly around 8.30, 8.15, 8.30. At the high school, right? Yep, just to get those. Um, and then uh, you may work through, and, and as you're charting some of these other dates, see that there's something there that Kelly and I missed, um, but we tried to basically mirror the... Uh, last couple of years in terms of the, the commitments. Mm -hmm. okay. I think that was that was it for that agenda item. Okay. Questions? No, not a question, just a comment uh, on the August meeting. The following Thursday is at the Basketball Hall of Fame dinner, so I will be out of town on that date, so any other day of the week that you're suggesting is fine, but I, I just give you a heads up on that. Yep. Okay. And I'm away on vacation that whole following week. Which week? In case anyone <laughs> wanted to know. Which week is that? Uh, the 16th. Oh, okay. So, okay. I actually think that's my vacation <laughs> sure. week. And, and Jane, well, no, wants to add some, Jane wants to add something to that. Sure, Jane. Yeah. I, I am actually going to be out for a couple of weeks. I have surgery on July 22nd. I probably need at least two weeks. I cannot drive. Okay. So it cannot be too early either. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, we, we also <laughs> offer rides. If, if you're still able to get out, we can certainly still pick you up. Here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chris. Chris is going to I would just like to state for the record that I am available. <laughs> <on it. laughs> I'm not going so. anywhere. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Okay, so I'll I'll pull so we'll, the we'll board. Be I'm, yeah. glad, I'm glad we got this out. Somebody now. can <laughs> somebody can uh, pop an email. Pardon me. We're still meeting. Twice yes, there's a regular. there's a regular meeting and a and a workshop. Work. But those should already be on your calendar yes. because the you know, year ends so June 30. Is it fourth and twenty? June fifth and no here June fifth and nineteenth. Oh, okay, you've got it. And then June fifth. Yep, and, and June nineteenth. Oh. All right. Um, okay. So now that that's all set, um, there anything else? You know, We're all good. Okay. Um, I see. Yes, Jackie. So it's just come to my attention, looking at my calendar, that this is our last. This is our second meeting in May. 
it occurs to me this would be Marissa's last meeting. Hmm. Won't she be here on June 5th? I will be here June 5th. You won't will. be here? June? I will be. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going away the 12th, and I won't be here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we you move on? Where, you? Where, where are you going on the 12th? May I be so bold as to ask? Oh, okay. Wow. All right. Is that for school, or is that for no, pleasure? No, it's for everything. Oh, right. excellent. All right. All right. So, so we'll be Let's seeing you so on we, the 5th. We, we, okay. we can expect you on the 5th then. All right, good. Okay, we don't want to sure. forget that. No? Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, so. Uh, Marissa, <laughs> the date of graduation <laughs> is. <laughs> the date, your date of graduation eight. is? The 8th. The 8th. Give us the whole spiel. Come on. June 8th, you graduate from? Scarborough High School. <laughs> Seven o'clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Senior assembly is the third at seven o'clock at the right. high school. So we have no other items on our agenda this evening. So I would ask, or I would ask that we're going to make a motion to go into executive session pursuant to one MRSA 4056A to discuss superintendent evaluation for 2013-14 as well as we will also have a motion to go into executive session pursuant to one MRSA 4056D to discuss contract negotiations between the board and both the bus driver and support staff groups. Do I have... So moved. Okay, do second. I have a second? Okay, we will not be returning to public session after our executive session. So this is the end of our board meeting. This is the conclusion. A motion then to adjourn to, to executive to adjourn to executive session. So moved. Second. All in favor of adjourning to executive session, not to return back to public session. Seven. So moved. Thank you.